As Margaret Walters explains, some of the first European women to speak for themselves and for the gender did so in a religious framework and in religious terms. They did it through a privileged institution like the convent. As this author tells us, for centuries families across Europe gave their unmarried daughters to convents, which for some was to be a prison, but for others a release. The convent could also be considered a space of freedom, where housework and reproduction were avoided, where reading and writing took place, and where quite a few women found their own voice through education in their large libraries. An example of this freedom is the great cultural contribution of two important nuns, the writer and musician Hildegard of Bingen in the 12th century and the mystic and poet Saint Teresa of Jesus in the 16th century. It will be in the same 16th century when the monastery of Las Descartas Reales is founded by Queen Joanna of Austria, Princess of Portugal, daughter of Charles V and sister of Philip II. Joanna of Austria reigned as Queen of Spain between 1554 and 1559, just being 19 years old. A queen who will rule in such a reasonable manner, especially regarding economic matters, but so independent that she even faced up to the rightful king, Philip II. She herself wrote, I was born a woman in a society made for men, but I ruled it like a man. In a period when the Protestants were persecuted in Spain, and having St. Francis of Borgia as a confessor and St. Ignatius of Loyola as a friend, the Queen will enter incognito in the Society of Jesus, the only woman who did this, pronouncing vows under the pseudonym of Mateo Sanchez. After an attempt to create a female branch of the Society of Jesus in this convent, she will set up a Franciscan community in them, the Carmelitas Descalzas, that will become the forefront of new Catholic meditation trends, such as that of the Recollection, which will influence St. Teresa of Jesus. In that period of political but also misogynistic persecutions, nuns who were not cloistered could break into public life, thanks to the habits and the divine justification for their actions. The Carmelitas Descalzas are an example of this, to whom St. Teresa proposed a program to expand convents, and thanks to the habit, could travel throughout Europe in that mission as Anne of Jesus and Anne of St. Bartholomew. Another notable figure is Mary of Jesus of Agreda, an undisputed figure of Spanish Baroque from the 17th century, a cloistered nun establishing an epistolary relationship with Philip IV, who asked her for intellectual and political advice, consulting her about almost everything and exercising her power from within the cell. <laughs> 